Adam. <laughs> Welcome to Binary Jazz. Uh, we have a new intro, uh, or we will have a new intro when this goes out, uh, and a new outro. Uh, I'm so excited. Brought to us by our friends El Serpiente Negra. Is that right? Not that there was anything wrong with the previous intro and outro. Yeah, but which was done by really, me and and very old and 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 but like I think that we're yeah I'm I'm ha- I'm happy to to relinquish it. it it made it had a good run but uh, it's nice for like a good like a refresh like who yeah. knows what vibes it's, will bring we're with this we're, new in, we're in season three I mean yeah it's 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 time uh, Serpiente Negra. Uh, so I don't adjust your radio frequency. You are. I guess it wouldn't be right L. Now. Don't change that dial. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be L because the negra is feminine. So it would be La Serpiente Negra if you're going to put a uh, if you're going to put a pronoun. Uh, Serpiente Negra Ensemble uh, is going to be doing our ensemble. Show. Ensemble. I'm so excited! Ensemble. It's so catchy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is a reminder to me to actually like put that into the uh, show before I <laughs> before I export the files. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's a cool thing. We were uh, discussing uh, the prevalence of, of manic panic uh, before we started recording. Uh, at uh, apparently, you can get that at like a drugstore, which is not a this thing. Is that the shoppers I, drug mart. Yeah, that's that's not a thing that I remember in as a manic panic buyer when I had you know hair. I always, I, I mean, I, I always wanted green. So there are some pictures of me around Christmas and Thanksgiving with green hair, looking all mad because my mom made me wear khaki pants to some family event or something. There's a, um, there's a YouTuber, uh, Ginny D, uh, who talks about D and D stuff, and she dyes, and she always has like fruity colored hair, but she also dyes her eyebrows, which mm. I find really intense. Like yeah. obviously she doesn't bleach her eyebrows. I guess that's not obvious. She doesn't bleach her eyebrows. She could, yeah. Yeah, she could, um, which would be even more intense. Um, but like, it's like, and I guess I could do that. I could dye my eyebrows, uh, but I don't. Well, then you'd have to do your facial hair too. Right, it would be, it would just be weird. It would just be a weird thing, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I made the choice to not do eyebrows. I felt like that was a lot. And like part of the reason I did it like this is like, I don't want upkeep. Like I don't, yeah. I can't. That's ideal, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I'm out here living my life. I can't be right. like, testing up my roots every two weeks, so. Yeah. You know, That's why my hair looks like this. Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, now's the time to do it. I know. I was like, the grocery store lady did not comment on my hair. <laughs> I was like, all mad. And then I was like, I don't know why I'm so mad. Because <laughs> I don't see anybody else. <laughs> she sees me every week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have a quote that oh. I'd like to bring to the table. Wait, oh. um, and let me know what this reminds you of. <laughs> oh, no. Because it sure reminded me of something when I was reading it. We've thrown a party for 50 people for which I feel the need to prepare a dozen gourmet dishes, the most elaborate being one from a Julia Child cookbook that called for me to hold an uncooked chicken to my lips and blow so forcefully that I am able to separate the skin from the meat, which I throw in a food processor with an assortment of expensive ingredients. Then I stuff it all back into a casing, hands on the Made out of the chicken skin in the shape of a basketball. Oh Jesus! Dyson sphere. Does this it's, is this the recipe? Did you find real, it? It's a real thing. Apparently, the name of the dish is called chicken melon. But you guys, oh I think, god, I think, that's terrible. I think I Julie's speak as the all right. The sole meat eater in this punch. <laughs> the sole meat eater here. I will say that that's a disgusting idea. Yeah, chicken and I eat melon. everything. Oh, Julia Child chicken melon. Let's see. Oh. Is there a picture of this monstrosity? Don't Google no, that. It's, it's just it's just the recipe. But oh. no, I'm I'm Googling that. <laughs> to paint the oh. picture, I'm reading in bed at night and I turn, I'm like, let me read this to you. What does it remind you of? <laughs> and Robin Robin just looks at me blankly at the end and goes, Dyson sphere? And I'm like, I know. <laughs> Okay, there's a picture of a turkey melon. 
Well, I'm sure you could use any sort of foul. Right, right. That looks horrible. <laughs> All right. Well, now I have to Google it. Oh my Jesus. Anyway, I just uh, thought that was a. Uh, I was like, I thank came you for kicking it. off with that. Is this is this the chick is this the chicken melon? Is this it? I found another one that's not that didn't get labeled turkey melon. Anyway, maybe oh. one of Julia Child's lesser known recipes. I think I think I found. Yeah, no, that's got to be it. That looks like it's probably chicken. Yeah, mm. that looks that looks terrifying. It, Dear God, it actually looks better here than it did in my head for what that's worth <laughs> i mean it doesn't sure. look good it doesn't yeah. look like something i would like yeah lay into oh yeah maybe, I, maybe i shouldn't have let off the show with that maybe i should have saved that for the end so you can all just revel in it for wow a while. it works out well because the turkey melon looks terrifying i don't like the idea of either <laughs> I don't like I just don't like those two words put together at all. <laughs> well, and there's a fair number of recipes or at least pictures of um like chicken or turkey in a melon, like served in a melon. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. I'm uh, I'm actually updating my uh, Slack status to be chicken. <laughs> chicken melon. Good old chicken melon. Yep. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that led us off. Um, so that's a thing. That's a thing that we didn't know was a thing before, but now we know is a thing. All right. Chicken melon is my status. For your work Slack or our Slack? Oh yes. Yes. I need, I need a Slack bot that changes my status across all my Slack simultaneously. That's I feel a, like that's a security risk somehow. Probably. So, uh, okay. for those of you joining us for the first time, uh, this is Binary Jack. Sorry. <laughs> That's a security risk, Gary. Uh, this is a show where three people, uh, we three people in, in particular, oh, uh, Al Allison presents uh, to us at some point, uh, probably, a topic of some variety that's not chicken melon. Um, <laughs> and uh, Gary and I try to... Uh, Digest? Uh, oh, <laughs> discuss uh, whatever it is that we think that that topic might be referring to most of the time uh, we don't know what it is uh, like at all uh, but um, generally we don't know what it is uh, prior to the conversation we don't we, are not, we don't discuss the topics before uh, the call we're on the internet it's binary jazz at us and uh, we're on Twitter. Sometimes we don't even discuss after the call. You can talk to us. You can you can send us questions that we will read at the end of the show uh, if we have them, uh, or you can you can tweet us at Binary Jazz. And I did see, uh, I happened to log in uh, to the binary or switch to the Binary Jazz Twitter account recently, and uh, someone someone used our genre nader tweet uh, tweet share button on the genre nader uh, uh, page on our website to share. A genre nader story so uh so i exciting. so i retreated it it was um let me go back i need to find it now uh, did they tag a friend in it no they did not tag a friend in it. okay <laughs> i think it would be really funny if the genre nader came up with like a genre someone had joked about with a friend and was like oh my gosh look at this and you know it was like a hysterical inside joke that we just got to be like a fly on the wall for and didn't really get but like oh maybe the internet isn't entirely awful it was, uh, you're never too old to listen to Corsican Chanson ensembles. That was the... Yeah, I can't imagine that being an inside joke, but what do I know? <laughs> that, was, that was what was shared. And, and, and it worked. It had shared the story. It had via binary jazz on it. It had a link that takes you to the story. It actually did a thing and somebody used it. And that's the first time in like... The, Wait, in, we in have like a thing a, where you can share it and then it, yeah. it, it, you can come back to the page and that's oh, still... Yes. Yeah, I built I that in, dude. I wrote that code. <laughs> How does that work? I really forgot that that was even part of it. <laughs> um, basically, it's just a URL string, and it takes the URL string and it turns it into the story that was generated. Um, so you go back to the page, and it just it just takes whatever was in the URL, and it 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 turns it into a story. What would your next thing be that you'd build if if someone was just like you have a month? Like, what would you do? Oh, man, um, would you not do anything? Would you be like, I'm going? to a field and not coding at all. 
I mean, I generally would say I probably don't build a thing. Um, I, no, I would, I would build a thing, but it wouldn't be a, a computer thing. Um, I would, uh, if I had a month to just do whatever I want, I would, um, I would work on my, um, I'd probably try to, to work on uh, finishing up my, uh, my RPG game system for a con artist game. Cool. Is what I would Damn it. Do. Now I want to refactor this thing. <laughs> Gary, what would you do with a month to yourself? Refactor my code, apparently. Yeah, refactor Chris's code, apparently. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I would, if I had a month. Would that be good for you or would that be like a hellscape for you as far as like stir craziness? Oh, no, it would be. Uh, if it were this month, like starting now, it would be a hellscape because I can't do much outside. Cause it's, I mean, I can, but it's chilly. Uh, if it were like, otherwise I would be like, oh, let me build some things and fix some stuff around the house. Yeah, I work with my hands, get some splinters, hit my thumb with a hammer and teach kids a new curse word. You know, like it would be, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think- It'd be a caricature of a 50s dad doing house repair. Yeah. That's what it would be. The thing is that when, when Aaron first broke her knee- um, I did have a month because I took a month off uh, for compassionate leave. And then I had some additional like half day, a couple of weeks doing half days. So, um, and when I had that, I, I spent uh, a bulk of that um, writing the, for the RPG writing thing uh, that I was, that I participated in that happened to coincide with that. I mean, I signed up for it before she broke her knee because uh, I was hoping to, to get it done. And I just focused, I just dug into that. And then I also worked on, um, uh there was a particular um uh, D, D adventure like a dungeon that had like like illustration it, it's from it's from a company that builds these like 3d models uh or 3d uh 3d pieces that you can use for your uh your environments so it's instead of it just being a map it's like here's like an actual room that your miniatures can fit inside and whatever and they had an, a module and i just turned that into something that i could use on uh virtual tabletops um which meant a lot of like copying and pasting and cutting out images and stuff and importing it into the thing which was really and then de de doing all sorts of crazy lighting stuff um so it was really sort of time consuming um but i like that was the other thing that i did is i just that took like a week to get that thing done um but now it's awesome and it's ready to go whenever i want to do it which it hasn't happened which is kind of disappointing because i spent all this time in this thing but um but yeah but yeah so i mean i totally that's totally what i would do i I have a confession, and this is not going to surprise anyone, um, uh, because uh, so so we're heading out to Valley of Fire tomorrow. Uh, so we mm. moved our uh, D and D, our our family D and D, back a day. So we did that last night, um, mm. so we could sort of got, start getting ready. And on Monday, I do my online thing, uh, D and D, with a group of the kids' friends and and a parent. Well, a a friend, the kids, and a parent. And then on Tuesday, I ran um, a game that was a Monster Hearts game um, that uh, for that started during the Human Made Retreat, uh, and then we never sort of wrapped it up. And that was um, like that was sort of like like we only had like a small chunk of time, like an hour session. So like so that was I was trying to get like you know sort of tie off the loose ends and, and do it within an hour. So basically, I ran three games in three days. Um, and I wasn't sure going into that how I would feel about running three games in three days. Like, is this something that I'm going to be like, this is awesome, or is this going to be something where like I'm totally burnt out by the end of it? I'm really ready to be done. Um, but uh, I think today uh, my feeling about the situation is, hey, you know what? I like D and D, y'all. <laughs> I am shocked and confused by this. I, I told you it would be a shocking revelation. <laughs> no, I, I yeah, so you have the you have the stamina. You have the it enlivens. I don't know if I don't know if it would like work on like a, a long term thing. Like if you're doing something every single day, um, it might get it might get draining after a while. But I mean, I'm assuming like if you're doing it every day, eventually it would take breaks too. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean that's it's I I, I yeah I like D and D y'all. Congratulations, you found something you like. <laughs> Feels like you've, you're leveling up, like. <laughs> yeah, sort of, yeah. 
Gary, what are you furiously typing about? I know, really. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> looking at the genre repo, obviously. <laughs> this, this can take place at a different moment. Be in the I, I, I clearly can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> why why did we make the decision? <laughs> Why, why do we make the decision not to make the short code? Um, like a separate, a separate thing. Like short code is part of the namespace, but honestly, like it, it shouldn't be part of the bootstrap. Like we should have a short code collection that gives us the ability to, I need to refactor this, Chris, is what it comes down to. This is, this will not, I will not stand for this. You are. You can have. I. You can refactor my code as much as you like. <laughs> I'm saying. I mean, I did years ago when this first came out. I. I was. Uh, there's. There's pieces, right? The fragments. There are adjectives and there's instruments and there's. I don't know what else. But. Uh, but it was fine. There's nothing wrong with it except that it was in like one class, and so each method complained complained contained, like you know, like here's the fragments, and I was. Uh, I was on a company trip. We were in. We were in Belize and I'm like, no, no, this can't work. This, these are clearly like individual ideas and they need to be repeatable in case we decide that there's another part of speech we need to add in here. Um, <laughs> so cue me sitting at the bar next to the pool. People are swimming in the pool, drinking a beer and I'm there my laptops converting it into, into classes. And I'm, I'm happy with that, but. Your focus is both a gift and a curse. It's not, it's, it's. You know it's, what that means. It's what? time for a topic. It's time for a topic. <laughs> it does, yeah. Yeah, before Gary starts talking about that. Oh, <laughs> Today's topic is murmuration. Murmuration. M U R. I'm going to close the. I'm going to close the browser. A T I O N. Murmuration. I'm going to yeah. turn off the monitors so I'm not distracted from you all. So. I might, full be, I might be making divided, shit up. undivided attention. I might be making shit up, but I think there's a word that is like sursuration, uh, which is sort of like a like a quiet sort of sound. So I feel like murmuration <laughs> is similar. It's it's like, like the next level up. Like a, no, I, a, I feel like I feel like and then a murmur. I feel like, I feel like sussuration is more like maybe it's a heart condition, Chris. Sure. Okay. Uh, murmuration. Murmuration. Is, murmuration. I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> I feel like susurration is sort of like uh, it's a quiet sound, quiet and continuous sound that is uh, just like uh, like ambient noise, like just just background sound, it's just sound. Whereas murmuration is the same idea except with like human voices. Like it's like you walk into a quiet. A uh, coffee shop, and there is a murmuration uh, that you that you experience. It's not like you know Starbucks, where it's like blaring loud of everything, but like it's a, it's a, just a quiet murmuration. I, actually, coffee shop, bad example. Library is a is a is, is a combination oh. of a murmuration and a susurration because there'd be this quiet sound of like pages flipping. Side side conversation. Why do all libraries smell the same? And Books. do you miss that smell? Paper. I mean. But it's more than that. It's not just aged paper. There's more happening there. Oh, I thought you were going to go on. I was like, I don't know happening. what it is. What? What there's is more happening? happening there. I don't know. There's more happening there. I don't know. But it's not just aged paper. How do you know? It's not just aged paper. I, I, I feel like I could just like walk into like an old lawyer's office and smell aged paper. But there's not, there's like the missing layer of, uh, uh, of lingering loiter people loitering while reading <laughs> maybe that's it the, the stench of loitering reader i don't think it's stench but there's there there is there's a there's a humanness in the library in that smell, smell that's stuff. not present in like old filing cabinets i think sometimes offices and old filing cabinets can smell the same though mm -hmm. that's why i think it's aged paper mm -hmm. mm. But there's also, I mean, I think I don't find that very romantic at all. I think possibly the the difference between a filing cabinet smell and the library smell is that books also books have different smells. It's not just the paper; it's also the binding, and it's like you know. And there's also uh, you also get the smell in a library of like 
the copy machine or like the like oh the that's what it is computer stuff like the heated a heated plastic sort of thing um yeah <laughs> when you talk about it it actually doesn't sound that healthy no <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i got some lung cancer from hanging out in the library too much over the summer when i was a kid got the black lung from the library um yeah, the, but when you describe it that way, I think about the library that I went to when I was a kid, and there was one corner near the kids section where there was like a corner window, and there was a chair there. I used to, I mean, it was in the summer, it would get unbearably hot compared to the rest, but I would still love to sit there in my little shorts and t-shirt and like read in the corner, leaned against the bookshelf. Like I, I can see the oak tree outside in my head. Uh, see, wow, spent, thank you for that. That's I awesome. Spent, I spent a lot that of time. really happy. I spent a lot of time uh in high school uh at the local copy mat copy mat is that a thing i think so i think it was copy mat i think it then it became like kinko's and then is that became... before is that before wordpress it's copy mat yes no, no. Uh, it was copy mat and then it was kinko's and then fedex bought kinko's and then it just became fedex anyway um uh because i because i that's where i made my zines is at the copy mat um sure and so i i have a very sort of visceral uh understanding of what copy machines smell like and so i know that libraries contain within them that smell of that copy smell. machines yeah sure sure it's probably well. the ink or something that that has that smell and i also know i also know what warm <laughs> freshly pressed copies smell like and feel like <laughs> <laughs> um back in the days of damn punk it's my that's my fanzine you can make a zine bot anyway sorry Ooh. like with with just random zine names of zines maybe or maybe, maybe it would names of zines and like and like a headline it would like yeah like spit out some content Aww. Like, yeah, like, like the headline for this issue of Damn Punk is like Kurt Cobain, is he really secretly alive in Texas or something? And then, like, a weird abstract photo from Unsplash, but in black and white, and like, yeah. totally yes, like, yes, really high very clearly, like, hand drawn with a pen, and <laughs> can't read the person's name that it wrote be, it because it has it's to like... be very high contrast, yeah, black and white, yep. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I don't like a zine today. When I when I, <laughs> when I was throwing newspapers, um, there was a uh, one morning this guy. I wish I remembered his name because it was a mo it was a very bizarre thing, and I guess you know probably indicative of what was to happen in the world. Um, he had been like slipping like some kind of manifesto into every newspaper he'd been throwing. So one morning he came in, and he's sitting there getting his newspapers ready, and police came in and took him away in handcuffs. And so I don't know what was in the manifesto. I unfortunately was not on his route. I didn't get to well, see that's too bad. crazy stuff he was spitting. Uh, but I remember like the... Uh, so uh, is, this, is the implication that he got the newspaper carrier job for the purpose of spreading his manifesto? Or do you think he was like radicalized while being a, a newspaper carrier and then just use that as his distribution method? No, I'm pretty sure he got the job as a, as a way to distribute his manifesto. Uh, yeah, I, nobody gets rattled. That, that actually speaks there. It's it's a very weird kind of person that keeps that job for yeah a long yeah. Time. It, it it speaks it speaks toward the uh, the hiring like wh where the bar is when hiring uh, newspaper carriers and and the reason why they hire like you know fifteen year old dipshits like me. <laughs> oh this okay this was this was later in my life this was actually probably younger than that i know i'm thinking about it this was like like here's a route with a thousand papers and which in like a little ford escort car meant the entire car was filled to the ceiling you couldn't see out mm. the passenger window on sundays um half the route was walking to apartments and stuff yeah it was a hoot i listened to a lot of really bad jazz uh i was um <laughs> It was uh, sixth and seventh grade, I think. Maybe it was just seventh grade. One, something. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, 
for uh it was just the i had i had filled in on on a route uh when a kid like i first applied and i filled in on a route a couple days on uh, that was farther away um a kid that couldn't make it on his route um and then that that sucked because it was all uphill and walking and whatever um uh and that was also like the first time i tried it but then um uh my route what became my route was like my apartment complex um, the apartment complex across the street and then a couple houses just along uh, probably duplexes just along sort of the next street over and it was probably uh, maybe maybe 200 residences it wasn't it wasn't huge and it was just like you know put it on my shoulder and just walk around ah. yeah I don't remember how many miles I covered in the morning there was one section where the other I, thing. The other thing was mine was a five o'clock paper, so that it wasn't. Oh. Didn't have to get up. I didn't have to get up early. It was like after school, start folding papers and and then go out. Oh, in the afternoon. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was, was like, I was in bed by five o'clock, but I was that was in the morning. I would pick evening, up at it was an evening paper. Two thirty or three, and be done by five. But there was one road that like kind of had an uphill, so. I could, uh, and there was one house that wanted it on the doorstep, so mm -hmm. I could open the car door run out while the car was like coasting oh. toss it on the doorstep and run and jump back in <laughs> i don't know why i never thought that was a bad idea yeah 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 you imagine if i tripped and fell and the car just kept unrolling and yep, yep. a tree I, I or a lake or a person <laughs> or a house or and i did that every morning and it was seven days a week for i guess so i was just like nope i don't want to do this anymore but i actually found the guy to replace me <laughs> and he was like hey man was here you go it's a good job. It pays well. It didn't pay well. Mine was seven. No, no, I did do Sunday papers. So yeah, mine must have been seven days. But I mean, it's like an, it's like, you know, an hour. It was like an hour worth of maybe an hour and a half worth of work because it was like a half hour folding papers and then a half and then an hour going out and delivering them or something like that. Yeah, I think I was a couple hours usually, except Sundays when they all weighed like a pound each. Yep. And... Yeah. <laughs> Sundays, I'm like literally pushing in the back of this little tiny four cylinder so the, station wagon. Close so the trunk. Murmuring. Murmuration is the sound. Murmuration. Is the sound of folding newspapers. It creates a murmuration. I would, uh, once I clear up this section, I would have to slam on the gas and then hit the brakes to slide them from the back to the front so I could reach more of them. No, you did not. I absolutely did. Yeah. I wasn't going to get out of the car and slide them forward. The back seats were all the way down because it was a, a station wagon and I could reach around behind my seats and stuff. But once I got to the point where I couldn't reach anymore, I would hit the brakes and then this pile would just slide forward. You're a, you're a living miracle, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I think about, I think about, there's a Weezer song that was like, we could have died a long time ago, uh, like the crazy shit that we did. <laughs> Um, and, and that's, I mean, that's I need to go that fast. That's, that's what like I'm 30. thinking as you're, as you're describing, like leaving your car rolling, coasting down the hill as you run out and come back and like, slam there was, the brakes there was the one person too, that requested that they, their paper be set on their car windshield, like on top of the windshield wiper. And I'm assuming that they would get in the car in the morning and go and grab it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the only reasonable assumption. Right. Um, but I got pretty good at that one actually of, um, I would drive into that parking lot. And they were kind of parked in a weird corner, so I could pull in, and then if I backed up the right way, I could fling it out the window and land it on their windshield mm. from like across the parking lot without having to get out. Which See, was I was I was a really horrible paper boy uh, in retrospect. Found a dead guy once. I no, <laughs> I didn't know he was dead. There was a person in a car, and it was like news days later. Oh Jesus! I didn't know he was dead. It was just a per I thought it was someone was drunk, passed out in the car, and that, uh, maybe at that point they still were. I don't know. But they weren't later on when the body was found. I I was a horrible newspaper boy. <laughs> I didn't report it. I didn't. I mean, I didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. To me. Uh, just, I used to. I used to like. I saw it in the paper. Obviously. <laughs> I used to bounce the the papers so that they would hit the ground, hit the door, and then sort of fly up and sort of land. And and like the trick was to do it in such a way that it would bounce, bounce, and then land on the doormat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I had some people get really pissed off at me <laughs> for doing that because it marks the door. It leaves the print on the door. Uh, and I'm sure it like, like scuffs up the, the corners too. Uh, and I like, I don't read, I'd never, I didn't read. I was a stupid 15 year old or, or younger. I didn't read the newspaper. Like I didn't care. <laughs> um, the guy that not. trained me 
like when there was one section where there were apartments that was downstairs and upstairs and we would like look at the route and he'd be like, just toss it down here and then just hit the door upstairs, like throw it from downstairs to upstairs. So I can imagine at 4.30 in the morning, like you hear like, wham, thwap every morning. Like I would complain. I, they never complained to me. I saw a kid leaving a house like through the window one morning. I guess he had been visiting someone. Oh. And he was coming out the window and saw me and froze. And I'm like, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> like what do I care? <laughs> I'm, sure, I, I'm sure that he was just like, oh no, what? Yeah, yeah, the fuzz. Uh, so, Murmuration, it's time for... <laughs> what a weird... What a weird um, Murmuration. Uh, murmuration is when birds, specifically starlings, do that like... Oh my gosh, I read that walking, word yesterday on the internet. Walking motion. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's beautiful to watch. Yeah, I read that yeah, word yesterday on the internet. Yeah, it's Dang. kind of breathtaking. Um, but wow. like the science behind it is really interesting because it's just like it turns out that like basically each bird keeps track of the seven birds around them <clears throat> excuse me and then ignores everybody else and so basically with all the little groups of seven it just works out <laughs> and I thought that was really fascinating so, so it turns out like, I don't think humans could do it. I think that even if we were walking with seven humans around us and we were basically keeping track of their movements, I think we would just still mess it up. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, <laughs> no, you can't stop in front of somebody like that. No, don't turn it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'd be a disaster. It, yes. It turns out that the word Even with just seven humans. Which uh, word? The word susurration yeah. uh, is a real word. I was right. Uh, and it means the thing that I attributed to murmuration. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's sort of a whispering sound or a murmur. No. Uh, let's see if I pronounced it right. Oh, it's not going to do it. You might have to spell that why, in chat. Why, why is it not? Oh, whatever. Screw, screw you. Screw you, Merriam Webster. S U S U R R Asian. Uh, we don't have any questions. Do we have any spam? No, I haven't deleted. It's going to be a long time before we get spam as good as the last spam we got. It's <laughs> literally become the show <laughs> opening music. I mean, let's just yeah. reflect on that for a moment. That's yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I hesitate to even call it spam, <clears throat> but it is unsolicited email. Um, so I guess technically. It well, qualifies. maybe it's not spam. Maybe it's chicken melon. I don't know. <laughs> Gross. Live by the chicken melon, die by the chicken melon. That's what I always say. I had a friend uh, years ago that suggested that should be like a phrase I add to stupid things I say. Apparently I said a lot of stupid things, but he said you should end a lot more sentences, but that's what I always say because that will justify like why you're saying it. So I tried it just for a hoot and it was hysterical uh, for three or four days. Have a good quiet time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I always say. That's what I always say. Uh, I even tried it, I think, I've, I'm sure I've scrubbed since then, but I even tried it in the early days of my uh, tweeting 11, 10 or 11 years ago. I used to tweet uh, I used to find weird articles about um, uh, Taiwan and tweet them. I know. Um, what is your uh, What is your your Twitter joined date? How do you find that? Uh, you go to your profile. It's right there. So Can my, I do it on my phone? Uh, maybe, probably. Um, it's so my my joined date is June two thousand seven. And, February uh, 2009. 2009, okay. Yeah. April 2009. Wow. So I was a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember joining Twitter and it was really early and nobody really had figured out what they were going to do with it yet. And so what we ended up tweeting about back in those days uh, was like, it was like, it was like just a feed of like 
stuff you're doing like yes like working on this stupid thing uh or like then then there then there'd be like all these bots that would um like like automatically tweet out the song that you're listening to so then it becomes like just like listening to such and such here's a link to this stupid song um and i remember like there was a couple things there was a bunch of things at the time that were all about uh like really just tracking dumb things that you happen to be doing like so that you could have like a record of like like this is all the shit that i, I went i saved something to delicious archive. today like <laughs> <laughs> um i i watched true blood today you know like at this time and so i i had i created um there is there is some way that i was able to aggregate all of those things into one feed and then i fed that into my blog so that if you could go to a mm-hmm. you could go to my blog and you would see like a, a stream of all the shit that i happen to be doing because like you know that's a that's valuable content for your stalkers that's yeah that's, that's valuable content uh and i remember i remember uh the only email i ever wrote to matt mullenweg was uh he was he had said in some interview that he reads all the emails that he gets um mm-hmm. And so I thought, hey, this is a cool thing that I started doing. Uh, maybe Matt would be interested in like the future of WordPress or the future of blogging or whatever. Um, and so I, I emailed him about this thing that I did. And he's like, you know, that's interesting. I, I, I wonder about like, you know, it being valuable for other people to really see all of that. Like, you know, who, like, who the, like whether or not it's, it's worth doing all, worth all the trouble that you're going to 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 make this thing that like nobody's really gonna watch nobody's really gonna look at it and i'm like i was like I, at first i was like fuck you matt <laughs> and then i was like no you're actually right that's a really dumb thing i should probably not do this at all <laughs> <laughs> that was my brief uh life blogging uh period uh, as recently as 2018, I was at a WordCamp where someone was walking around with one of those cameras on that filmed everything and uploaded it. Uh, and I'm like, why? I, would, I just wouldn't want to interact with that person. Oh, I did. I know, I did. but like, is that is that like a weird response on my end? No. No. Like, no? no, I think it's a healthy response. Okay. Um, but we ended up going uh, and getting uh, it's like body cam lunch and talking through it while he ordered food and interacted with someone. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.